In this video, we're going to talk about how to begin wholesaling houses. Stay tuned. Hey my friend, this is Ola coming to you live from my Empire Pro Studios on the road. In this episode, I want to show you how to begin wholesaling houses, okay? But also, as always, I'm going to answer a question that came in today so we can help you boost up that knowledge, that wisdom a little bit. I say knowledge and wisdom because sometimes, um, not sometimes, a whole lot of time people have knowledge of what this game is, wholesaling houses, but there's a lot of wisdom that comes with experience and sometimes it's not as simple as looking at a textbook or knowing the theory or being able to answer questions is you can feel some type of answers that come from experience and a lot of time i'll tell you stories that will make it make a lot more sense to you all right so with that being said how do you begin wholesaling houses the first step to begin wholesaling houses is to find a mentor find a mentor i can't stress that enough for the very reason I just told you, there's a lot of wisdom that comes with experience, okay? Uh, you can either pay for the experience yourself with money or pay for it by having a mentor and doing business with them and bringing deals to the table for them. They know what is a deal. They are willing to talk to you. If something is a deal, if it's not a deal, they're able to work it out with you and just like that. And you can also do collaborations with other people, but just find a mentor, collaborate with a mentor. It makes your life a whole lot more easier. When I started, that was something I got very lucky with. Nobody told me to find a mentor, but I stumbled into a few mentors, at least about three of them. And I worked very closely with one of them. My first four leads, I gave it to my mentor and we worked it together. And because of watching him as he was working it, then I found a fifth deal and then I worked it myself and I closed my deal faster than his, right? And then I had these four other deals in the pipeline and then we closed and all that money just kind of flowed back to back. The first one I closed was in 2005, December, and 2006 was a blaze. It was an awesome year. All right, so, but anyway, anything I'm sharing with you here comes from experience. So, uh, you know, just, just take it and learn from it okay so the question that came in today uh, says so so I can have a house under contract but they need five thousand dollars in earnest deposit I don't have that kind of money what should I do it's a great deal help <laughs> all right so uh, this is a simple question but it doesn't come with a simple answer. Um, it's a little tricky, okay? It's a little tricky, uh, but but I can simplify it, I promise, okay? This person has a house that they can put under contract right now, but the seller needs a $5,000 deposit, earnest money deposit, right? Um, some people call it EMD, earnest money deposit, right? Uh, I don't have that kind of money, quote unquote. What should I do? It's a great deal. Well, if it's such a great deal and you don't have that kind of money and the next logical thing to do will be to walk away from the deal, right? Right? Because you don't have that kind of money. But here's how I can prove to you that it's not such a great deal, okay? If it was such a great deal, you'll find somebody in your circle of influence, okay? And they will give you that $5,000 and you can lock it under contract and you can close in the next few days, right? Because it's such a great deal. At least that's how you feel, right? But if you're the only one that feels it's such a great deal and the people that have $5,000 don't feel like it's a great deal, guess what that is? Not a great deal, <laughs> okay? So again, just logic. I'm not making fun of you, just simple logic. If you think it's a great deal, and you don't have $5,000, that's not the end of a great deal. If it's such a great deal, all you have to do is make a few phone calls, send a few emails, tell them what the numbers are. If it sounds like such a great deal, right? If it's such a fantastic deal, somebody will be like, yes. And then they'll put it, they'll give you that $5,000 or just say, hey, I'll pay you an assignment fee. Let's put the contract together. I'll pay you another $5,000, such a great deal. Let's give 5,000 to the homeowner and let's go close the deal. 
The only reason why the scenario I just painted is not playing out is because it's a great deal not. Okay, so now let's give the scenario if it was such a great deal. Let's say if it's truly a great deal, then really all you have you don't have to have the money for great deals. If something was such a great deal, you don't have to have the money because there will be people in your circle of influence at the real estate association club that will happily help you pay for that deposit, right? And they'll pay you a fee for helping them look for that deal, helping them find the deal. Uh, here's a case in point. Let's say that's a commercial property, right? We all know that the commercial property is going to bring in uh, $10,000 every single month, all right? In fact, it's already rented out. There's lease in place, lease two years in place, right? And the owner says, hey, I'm going to sell you this. I'm going to give you a contract, but you got to have $5,000 earnest money deposit. If you could come back here and post this question, then you could basically say, hold on one second, let me let me get the detail. You tell them what the product you tell you tell your circle of influence, which should involve or include uh, a real estate as, uh, association, right? A real estate uh, investors club or investors association, a REA. And you basically tell everybody, I got this deal. The property is worth $700,000. It's bringing in $10,000 every single month. He wants to sell now for $250,000. Remember, it's worth $700,000. It's bringing in $10,000 every single month, right? I don't know if those numbers work like that, but basically the payment, the monthly payment and obligation on this property is $1,000. The property brings in $10,000. So the net profit every month that the property brings in is $9,000. Multiply $9,000 by 12 months in a year. The property is bringing in about $100,000 every year, right? And really, all we have to do is pay $150,000 for this property. Well, I don't have the money. I don't have $5,000 to put down. Uh, there are going to be enough people who say, you know what? We're going to do the deal. Not only that, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you $5,000 for finding this deal. I'm going to give you $10,000 for finding this, this, this deal. So my cost is going to be $10,000, $15,000 plus $250,000. There are investors that will pay you that all day long if it's such a great deal. So the problem here is simply, again, another scenario where people determine if something's a great deal just off of what they feel. The market has its own feeling entirely, okay? And it's definitely not what any individual feels. You gotta have numbers. You gotta have a proper presentation of what the deal is. And the deal needs to make sense. What does make sense mean? It needs to make sense. It needs to make money, right? So, like for example, the example I just gave you would make sense to any investor because basically they put $250,000, worst case scenario, all costs involved, $300,000 down, but they're making $100,000 back every year. People would do that all day long, okay? $100,000, that's 30%, uh, 33% of that money coming in every single year. That's basically more like highway robbery, okay? And they will happily pay for that every month. So, Put the house under contract ASAP by simply telling investors that this property exists. Now, if you don't have the details I just gave you, which is how much is the property worth? How much are they asking right now? How much is it bringing in every single month? What is the net operating income of the property? If you don't have that details, how could you even judge or say or, or determine if it's a good deal or not? You can't rightfully say that. You can't because you don't have that information. You don't know if it's a good deal. Okay? So we can't help you. <laughs> okay? We can't help you because if it was such a good deal, number one, you see that you have the money or you have access to the money. You don't get paid for having access for having the money. You get paid for having access to the resources and putting resources together and you get paid more importantly for adding value to people's life. Okay? You don't get paid for having five thousand dollars. So that's one side of the answer to this question. That's why I told you it's not really such a simple question. Now, if you had a mentor, they'll be able to walk you through this, but thank God we have this video, right? The other side of the question is, if you're a wholesaler, you are never, you are never to put money down no more than $10, okay? I have never put down money on a wholesale deal, 
ever in my life okay and I don't plan to do that when somebody is asking for earnest money deposit is usually an indication that they are not motivated especially if we're dealing with a residential property okay it's usually a sign that this person is just not motivated okay uh, they have time they have enough time and and what do I say they have options to be asking me for earnest money deposit and rather than just making just signing off the contract and asking me to please take this property away if they're not at that level of motivation I don't deal okay they need to be motivated they need to want to get rid of the property even if that means free that property must be a complete absolute liability on their books if it's not they will not be motivated enough for me to do business as a wholesaler so as a wholesaler I buy houses cheap less than what it's worth so I can put it back on the market and sell it for profit I help investors find deals and I make assignment fees for finding such deals the kind of deals that investors are looking for are properties that are priced below market value and need a way to add value to it the property that needs some kind of work okay so that's the other side and probably the most important side of this whole thing you need to understand that you should not be talking to somebody asking you for five thousand dollars you should have enough leads coming through your pipeline that when somebody says they want five thousand dollars, you say hey good luck let me know i can close in 10 days but no i'm not giving you five thousand dollars i mean i gotta put it on a contract and i gotta do my due diligence which includes making sure that my partners are interested in the property and if you must absolutely take something i'll give you ten dollars if that sounds completely ridiculous to them then you're just talking to the wrong lead you're talking to the wrong prospect you need to go back into your pipeline and pull the next you should be in a position where you can always say next next so what next next okay you need to be able to do that you need to be position to do that and the way to do that is to know how to generate leads know how to generate a pipeline of leads of people looking to sell their house coming in if you want to learn how to do that go into my book it's absolutely free at smartrealestatewholesaling.com the name of the book is smart real estate wholesaling hopefully you've been enlightened and educated Smash that like button and share with your friends and comment your questions below and I'll see you on the next video and peace.